Thanks, everybody. This is a, this is a great conference. I, I really like uh, having the opportunity to sit with people at dinner last night and meet some new people. Um, good stuff. So this, I'm going to cram a lot into this talk, uh, so I'm going to speak pretty fast. You can come catch me afterwards. We've got 25 minutes to get into some really dense content. Uh, so what is RxJS? Uh, I'm going I'm to start off a little preamble here and, and talk about how my opinion is about what this, this question, the answer to this question is, has kind of evolved. But maybe the real answer is in how you use it. Um, <laughs> frequently, people walk up to me and are like, RxJS is so hard. I, I just don't get it. Um, Unless they've been using it for a while, or it's that's just for streaming data, right? Like they, that's a common thing. Uh, very prominent people on Twitter say sometimes. RxJS is great if you want to make a stock ticker or something. Um, I've I've heard all these are literally things I've heard. Uh, what if I want to do something more complex than a look-ahead search? That's uh, actually not Jeff Cross's beard. I'm not naming the people. Some of these people are very. Uh, influential people in the React and Angular communities. Um, so as Tracy said, I'm Ben Lesh. I am a software engineer at Google. Uh, some of you might have known I worked at Netflix for, for several years. Um, I'm the RxJS project lead. I did not invent RxJS. Uh, Rx, Rx was invented by a guy named Eric Meyer, and RxJS was started by uh, a wonderful guy named Matt Podwasecki. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Ben Lesh. Uh, I always try to answer questions people DM me about uh, RxJS if I can. Um, so you can, you can catch me there as, uh, all the time. So here's an evolution of things I've said about RxJS. The first time I saw it, first day, what the hell is this? Um, looked like Lodash or something. Why do I need another one of those? Uh, then for a while, I was telling people, well, it's like promises, but for more than one value. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite accurate. Uh, observables, observables are an async type. It's a, RxJS is about observables. Um, that's still not entirely accurate. Lodash for async. We still got that word async in there. Uh, it's not really always asynchronous. So how about observables? That's a, are they're a concurrency primitive? Uh, we've got a single threaded environment with JavaScript. Uh, maybe it's not really about concurrency. Uh, I've, I've finally kind of settled on observables. It's our push push based sets. So. RxJS is about manipulating observables, which are push-based sets. So RxJS is often used to deal with asynchrony. And the types of asynchrony you'll see are things like DOM events, AJAX, web sockets, animations, server sent events, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, this is the common list of things you see RxJS uh, built around like actually dealing with. But it's not just about asynchrony. Uh, it's about pushing values, as I said earlier. So there are synchronous things you can deal, deal with in, in RxJS, things like uh, single values. So you'll sometimes hear me say a scalar value. So that's, that was like an observable of one value or an array. Or you could get every value out of an iterable synchronously. Um, pretty much anything you can get uh, a handle to in memory or make a call and get synchronously, you can push out of an observable. So just, just keep that in mind. And that's, this is just kind of a public service an announcement. The real uh, the real talk is right here. This is, this is RxJS by example. Um, this is a 300 level talk. So for those of you not familiar with uh, like American um, college uh, course, course levels, there's 100 level, 100 level, that's like your beginner. 200 level is like the next step up, 300 level up to 400 kind of thing. Um, I do have an RxJS basics talk. You can, you can watch on YouTube. It's linked here. I it did a couple years ago at Angular Connect that explains more basics. I'm going to be diving into some concepts that you know you I, you would probably need to be somewhat familiar with with uh, RxJS to to grasp in this particular talk. So what we're going to do uh, to do this by example is is we're actually going to add some features to I have the simple news feed app, very very simple. All it does is just get some news and display it. Uh, it gets some some news via AJAX and, and displays the the list. Um, we're going to add two features. The first feature is we're going to get the data on an interval. So we don't want the user to have to refresh the page to see what, what the news, what news has happened, say, the last you know, however long, 30 seconds, 30 minutes. Um, and uh, we also want to add the, the mobile feature that some of you might be familiar with, where you're in an app and you can pull down. Uh, if you're at the top of the page, you can pull down and uh, re refresh your, your data, so like a pull down to refresh. So here's my super cool app. You can see I've, I've styled it with the latest in uh, default browser styling. Um, 
it's just it's just like a title and some news. This is all clearly generated, and um, I took the screenshot this morning. Um, the the basic structure as it stands right now is we just have one latest news component and one news feed service. It's a very 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 simple app, and I want to keep it simple so we can focus more on the features we're going to add. So here's our latest news component. Um, it's got a news dollar sign uh, property that dollar sign denotes an observable. Um, and that's actually calling get news uh, right there. And it's getting some news. As, as soon as you instantiate the component, it's getting this, this uh, news observable. And uh, we're going to use that in the template in a bit. And it's, it's also injected this news fee service, which is using to get the news. Um, then our template is using pipe async. So when, whenever this component mounts, it's going to subscribe to that news observable. It's actually going to go fire the AJAX request. And then it's going to get back this list of news, and it'll loop over it with ng4 and, and uh, write it out to the view. So this is the whole thing. Um, pretty simple. The news feed service uh, looks like this. So we're using HTTP to get our, our news feed. We're mapping to get the JSON off of that. And I've got a, I've got a kind of a hand wavy catch here that says, hey, I've got an error. Log it to console, and then don't tell anybody about it. It's really horrible UX. Don't do this. But just, just as an example, this is, this is what it looks like. However, I wasn't super confident about what the internet would be like, not only at a conference, but also on a cruise. That's probably a double whammy, I figured. So I, I was, I'm using this sort of way to generate. Uh, it's just, it's just a, a timer, and we're mapping to, some, to, some, uh, to an array of, of news values. So I've kind of mocked in. My, uh, my getting my news. And I've got a one second delay to kind of mimic the delay of making an AJAX request. So just, just, to, just so I was sure that I wouldn't have any problems. So let's add our first feature. Let's add the update interval feature. This is the, the simplest feature. That's why I'm starting, starting with it. So before, we just had this news property that had an observable in it. But I wanna, what we want to do is we want to start there and kind of work our way backwards. We're going, I'm going to add this update news triggers property, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set it to a timer. Now, a timer with two arguments is basically the same as an interval. The difference is the first argument is when the first event comes out of the timer, and the second argument is an interval for every uh, subsequent event after that. So it's, this is going to tick every three seconds. It's just going to fire in this case, because I've set it to 0 and then 300. So it ticks once immediately, and then every three seconds afterwards. Um, so, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our new update news triggers property and we're going to use that with a switch map and compose it into getting the news. So every time that fires now, it's going to call get news, get the results or get the observable from that and then flatten the results back out into the, that news observable. So the news observable, or the, the news property itself hasn't changed type at all and we don't need to change our template. So this is what it looks like. It's on, uh, you can see it kind of updating there. It's on like a three second pause, so you can see that. I'm sorry, it's the boat's jittering a little bit, it looks like. Um, pretty simple. So th that feature is done. Uh, you might want to set it to something other than three seconds. But, but uh, so things to notice about this so far, it's hard to notice because we only did really one step here. What we did is we worked our way backwards. Uh, we didn't need to touch the templates because we didn't really change the, the type from, from the, the spot at which we worked our way backwards. We didn't change what type of observable we were, we were putting out, and that just made it a small refactor. So let's, uh, let's dive into a mo much more complicated feature, pull down to reload. This is, this is a lot more complicated than what we just did. I, I chose this specifically because it's got a lot of things around animation, user inter interactions, and you've got an AJAX uh, request in there. And the reason that a pull down to reload is complicated, it doesn't sound complicated, yeah, I just pull down and it reloads, that's great, um, is what, what it actually involves is if you pull down but you don't pull down far enough and you let go, it doesn't refresh, right? People are kind of familiar with that behavior. But if you pull down far enough, then it says, oh, I need to go get data. And you usually have like a little spinner there that animates and it hangs out until the data is reloaded and then it animates back up. Also, if you pull down and you don't pull down far enough and you let go, it animates back up into the, the ceiling or the top of the, the, uh, the app. So there's, there's a lot of different things here. We've got animations, user, user interactions, like I said, and, and some AJAX. Um, so one thing that I do know going into this is I've talked about drag and drop um, around RxJS a lot uh, because it's, it's a very 
a nice example for how you can kind of compose events with ArcGIS. And there's a pattern that you can do with mouse, with mouse events that actually carries over well to touch events because we're going to be doing this for, for mobile devices, um, which is you, you just take the touch starts, and then every time there's a touch start, you map that into touch moves, and, to, and you take those until there's a touch end. So you're just saying, give me all the touch movements, starting when someone starts touching and ending when someone stops ending, or stops uh, touching. Uh, see, I've, I've got this component. I've called it the touch drag to load component. Now, what this component is going to be, we're going to add this component. And this component is just going to have our marker that, that's going to follow our, our touch drag our, and, and have the little animation. So we're going to have a separate component for this. Uh, it needs to do things like it needs to be able to trigger the reload. And it also needs to be notified when the load is complete. Because we know our, our news loading, as it stands currently, is in our latest news component. It's also a horrible name. I probably could have came up with a better name, but meh. Uh, I'm going to add also a load notification service. Now, this is going to kind of act like an event bus between our two components. Um, and that's just because it makes, it makes life a lot easier for communicating uh, from the, that marker component, the touch drag to load component, to let it know, to, to have it communicate out when it wants to reload, and also have the latest news component communicate back when the load is done. So the basic architecture looks like this. We've got our latest news component, which already exists. We're going to add our drag down to load component as like a child of it in its template. And then we have this load notification service that kind of communicates back and forth between the two. The load notification service. This is all the code for the load notification service. Very, very simple. Uh, we've got two subjects in here. Now, subjects, if, if you're not familiar, are just, they're like observables, but they're also observers. They, can, they're, they allow you to funnel events through them. So we've got a request load that we're going to pump val values into if, um, or pump signals through when we're ready to request that we want to load the data again. And we've got load complete, which we're going to uh, call next on whenever the, the uh, load is done. So this, uh, the top one is, is one that um, the, the uh, dra touch drag to load component is going to call to say, hey, I need more, I, I'm ready for, I'm telling you to load more data. And the bottom one is the latest news component is going to call to tell the touch drag to load, hey, I, I'm done loading data. You can, you can animate back up. So we're going to refactor our latest news component again right away. Uh, it's actually a pretty simple refactor. What we're going to do is we're going to, of course, provide our, our load notification service that we just created. And then every time, um, oh, every time our request load fires an event, we want to tr update uh, we want to update our news. So I'm actually going to merge that in with our timer from that, that we had in our last feature. So now, not only when the timer fires will, will it uh, load the news, but with just that alone, every time someone calls next on that request load uh, uh, subject, it's going to trigger this update news and there, therefore cascade down here to the switch map and load our news. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add this do block. Now, do is for side effects. Uh, do is just saying, hey, I, I'm not going to alter the output of this observable, but whenever I reach this point, I want to next on this load com completes here. And since, since load completes is a subject and subjects are observers, you can pass it in plainly to do. Uh, the only thing you have to be careful with in this case is if it calls complete on the subject, the subject is done. But this particular observable never completes. So we don't have to worry about that. I just, I just pass it in directly. And every time we get news values back from our AJAX request, it's going to signal that load complete. So that's it for, for uh, that. Let's talk about the touch drag to load component. Here's our template for that. I've got this outer div that's really just about positioning the whole thing kind of up, up at the top center. Uh, I'm going to say that my marker is 70 pixels wide. Uh, and just kind of hard code that in here. So I've got a, a margin left on the second div here to kind of make sure that that's centered. Uh, and what this is is an SVG with a couple circles. So there's like a 70 pixel uh, diameter circle with a smaller black circle uh, above it so you can kind of notice a spin when we make it spin. And then there's only two things we're really manipulating in this template. There is the style transform uh, for the position of that second div. So I'm going to use uh, translate 3D to change the, the Y position of that, that div as we are doing things like dragging and that sort of thing. 
and I'm using an observable for that in pipe async. And then the other thing is when we want to animate it while it's loading, we need to ro we want to rotate that circle. So I've, I'm actually going to transform the whole uh, SVG with this rotate transforms pipe async. So I've, I've, ha I've got two observables in here. We can, um, <laughs> I've just explained these two things. There's a, here's the two observables. Uh, we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and uh, just stub this component in. So I know that I want my load notification service. So I, I've already provided that here. Um, what, what, I, what I've also stubbed in is I've, I've added that position translate 3D, which I'm using in the template, in the simplest possible observable just to make it work. This is just an observable of the CSS string I need. I did exactly the same thing for rotate transform. So the, the simplest possible thing just to make it work. Uh, and then, of course, I also have to add this component to my latest news uh, component template. So if we take a look uh, in Chrome, I'm using Chrome DevTools mobile uh, preview. We take a look in Chrome, it's just going to look like this. You've got some circles stuck at the top of there, right? They're not doing anything, but it's rendering. We see that it works. That's good. Um, so let's, let's, start, let's start making the, uh, the drag behavior. So when you, when you touch and you, you want it to move along with, with, your, with your touch. So uh, let's, we're, in order to do this, I'm going to start working my way backwards from that position translate 3D. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this second property called positions, which is slightly more useful because it's just going to be the numeric value of the position I want, right? So instead of this, this whole CSS thing, I've, I've kind of added a, another layer there. Uh, the other thing that we want to do is we want to have an offset of the same size as 70 pixel size for, for our marker, so our marker stays off the top of the screen, right? We don't want it to, to hang out there at the top of your screen where people can see it all the whole time. So just kind of got that little offset. And then I'm going to start with our drag and drop pattern that I showed earlier, our, our touch starts, touch ends, and touch moves. Um, so again, this is... Every time there's a touch start, take all the touch movements until touch ends. So I've just stubbed that in there. And you're going to see there's a little red squiggly line down here on our start with. So what I've got is, uh, this is I've, I named this drags, this property that I've, that I've put my, my drag behavior in. And I want, I want my position to update with drags, but I still want it to start with zero, because I want it to start off, off the top of the, the screen. I don't want it to not know where it's supposed to be. But this is unhappy right now, because right now, uh, drags is returning to us an observable of touch events. So we, we, need to, we need to kind of scrub our observable of touch events into an observable of numbers, so we have positions down here. And in order to do that, uh, we're go basically going to take our start event, and we're also we're going to combine it uh, with our move events down here. And we're, I'm just going to take the first touch off of the event and look at the page Y on it. Um, and I'm just going to map to the difference between those two. So now we know how far the user has moved vertically on the page while, they, while they're touching. So once we do that, we have something that's draggable. So this is uh, me mim mimicking uh, touch movement. So yeah, you can drag it. OK. We're getting somewhere. We, we can drag it, but it's, it's not the whole feature yet. Um, let's make it animate home when we let go of it. That's, there's, we, we want it to load also, but the next simplest thing is, OK, as soon as we let go of this, we always want it to snap back up at the top. So let's add that. Now, this is going to get a little, a little hand wavy. You saw you guys might have seen that on Slack I posted, and I, I, I tweeted this the other day, uh, my talk on RxJS animations. I, I'm not going to go into in, in depth into how the animation stuff works in this particular talk. Uh, that, that this talk that's linked here does. Uh, but I will tell you that I've got this tween function. And what tween does is it takes a start value, an end value, and a duration. And it's going to return to you an observable. And the observable is going to fire every animation frame. And it's going to give you values that start at the start value and end at the end value over the duration that you asked for. So this, this is how tween works. We're going to use this a couple times in this talk. So back to our code. This is, this is what we have so far. And uh, what we want to do is we want to make it so after our after our, our, uh, our, our uh, touch drag has ended, we, we want to run this animation. So we know that we need a start position. So I've, I've got this, um, I've got this uh, position variable to kind of record the, the start position. And I'm just concatenating on the end of this. So like after this is done, I'm concatenating on the end of it in animation. 
right? So the problem is we need to update that start position because right now it's zero and in here we're not doing anything to it to, to know what it is. So what we do is we, we add a do operator. And do basically just says, hey, every time I get a value past this point, execute whatever's in here. And in this case, I'm taking that value and stuffing it in our pause variable, which we're using down here for our animation. We have another problem, though. Whenever this is evaluated, it, it's a being evaluated whenever this whole switch map function is called. So at the time that tween is evaluated down here, Pause is always zero, so you're animating from zero to zero. Um, that's not what we want. We want to we want to wait until later to to evaluate this function and get this observable. So in order to do that, we wrap it in observable defer. So observable defer just says here's an observable. I don't want to get this observable yet, so let's wrap it in observable defer. And so then you have something when you subscribe to it, it then gets the observable you want and subscribes to that. So let's have a look and see what that looks like now. So we can drag it down and ooh, look, it animates out. Fancy, we're getting somewhere. So that's, that's good. So let's, let's try to get it to trigger a load uh, if you drag far enough. It's going to get a little trickier. So what we can, what we can do is we can actually use, uh, again, another do uh, block here to have a side effect because we know, remember before we composed this, this load notification service request load subject into our latest news component, like right into that update, uh, update news property that was, that was triggering the update to the news. So we know that we want to call next on request load. So in our do block, we just say if the position is, is farther than half the, the window height, and you, I could inject window here, I could be better about this, but, and in fact, I, I think I, I have that in my latest code so I could test it, but uh, if, if we get past half the window height, then go ahead and next on this. So it's gonna, that, that, should, that should trigger the load, but we don't wanna span the load. We don't want every time you drag past the window height, there's gonna be a whole bunch of events when you get past half the window, window height. We don't want to have it spam loading the, the news over and over and over again. So we want it to stop after you get past a certain point. So only take these while you're less than the, the uh, half the window height. Um, but now we've got a problem that when we hit this take while, it's going to kill the whole thing. So all of our drag behaviors and everything, the first time you drag it down, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get to the point where it goes and triggers the load and then it's never going to work again. Um, so that's not we won't even animate back up. That's not that's not what we want. And so how do we how do we bring an observable back to life that we've killed ourselves with take while? It's pretty easy. We just add repeat. And as soon as that just says, hey, as soon as I'm done, start me over again. So not a problem. So let's have an, let's have a look and see how we're doing. So there we go. We pulled it down and it loaded some data. But as you can see, after it loads data, it just kind of hangs out. And what we really would like for it to do is leave after the data is done being loaded. So I'm going to start in a different spot over here. I'm going to add a, a property called complete animations. And the, the purpose of this pro property is going to be to uh, get a whole set of positions we want to update to make it move off the screen whenever it completes. Um, so complete animations, again, it's just using that tween function. From whatever the current position is, I haven't figured out how to get that yet. That's why there's red squigglies there. Uh, and we want it to go from whatever the current position is of the marker back to zero in, in a fifth of a second. Uh, and then I'm going to go to my positions property that we made earlier that currently is only deriving from drag with a start with. And we're going to add in, we're going to merge our complete animation. So now, Positions will be updated when either complete animations fires or drags fires. Uh, and we, we, they'll both be with numeric values. So let's go back to this uh, complete animations. Uh, we, we need to work backwards. We need to get current position from something. Well, fortunately, we, we, we have this positions property. We just saw. We just, we just merged complete animations with it, right? And so we know that we can get the, the current position off of that. Uh, and I can just do that with a switch map and then switch map that into my animation. Uh, but we've got red, squi red squigglies here again. And the reason we have red squigglies again is because 
uh, the compiler isn't going to like this. I'd, positions would need to be defined before complete animations. But I already told you that positions has complete animations merged into it. So we've got this which one do we do first problem. It's not a big deal. Observable defer to the rescue again. This basically just says, again, here's an observable. When you subscribe to it, execute this function to get another observable and subscribe to that. So this, this kind of offsets or delays that. And this is totally fine because positions is never going to be a thing until the component actually mounts. So it's not going to cause any weird race conditions or anything to do this. So the, the other thing, though, is that we know that we, we don't want this to just, OK, every time the position updates, start animations. That would be crazy. You'd be starting animations every, like, every single tick as someone's dragging. So we want to actually only start this when, a, when the load notification service completes. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, when, whenever, the, whenever the load notification service completes fires, we're actually going to take the latest value from positions and switch map from there. So after, after that, we've got this, uh, the second here, I'm destru destructuring those two things together. And uh, I'm taking the current position, which is coming from positions there. So again, whenever load completes fires, it says, hey, what's the last value I got from positions that I'm internally subscribed to? Uh, and then we're going to use that to get our animation. So let's see how that looks. So we've got our load. Oh. When the load's done, it animates back to where it's supposed to go. Pretty fun. But let's make it spin. It's more, it's more fun if it spins while it's loading. So remember our rotate transforms property. We've stubbed this in with uh, rotation 0 degrees. Uh, we're going to do the same thing that we did before and work our way backwards and kind of separate this off into a, a, a rotates observable here and just stub that in with the simplest possible thing to start with, which is observable of 0. And then you know, rotate transforms is just going to be mapped off of that. And we know that uh, we want our rotation to be an animation, and we want it to spin around 360 degrees. So I'm going to say animate from 0 degrees to 360 degrees in half a second. But that's only going to spin us around one time. And we want it to spin forever. So what do we use? Repeat. And it's just going to spin around uh, forever as soon as we do that. So let's have a look and see what that looks like. So I'm going to drag it down part way. And oh, look, it's spinning. That's great. But we only really want it to spin while it's loading. So what do we do? It's, we use our load notification service again. So this, is, again, is a subject that whenever a load is requested, we'll get uh, a value next to it on it. Um, and we're just going to we're going to switch map that into our animation. So that means every time a, a load is requested, go ahead and start an animation. But we don't want that animation to go forever just because a load was requested once upon a time. We want it to stop eventually. So we're going to we're going to add this uh, take until load notification completes. So whenever you request a load, do this animation, take it until the load completes. And then the final thing we want to add in here is whenever the, the animation is totally done, I'm, I'm concatting on this observable of 0, and that's just going to play the value 0 at the end. So that's going to make, make sure that the uh, marker doesn't end up in some weird half-spun location and then animate it back. We're going to have it just jump back to 0 where it's supposed to go and, and then animate. But you notice like the, the animation to make it move back up is not composed into this. Those are two totally separate animations. There's one kind of controlling the vertical position and one controlling the rotation. So let's see, let's see if we got our feature implemented. Look at that. That's the whole feature. So, so the, just, to, just to recap on what you need to do to, to kind of think reactively and build these sorts of things, um, I know this is a really complicated example, and that's particularly why I chose it. You can do some really complicated event coordination with, with Rx. But what you want to do is you want to start simple. So stub in the simplest possible observable just to make your template work. And then you want to work your way backwards. So figure out what you need to update that observable and, and kind of get those things and start composing them. Uh, observable defer is a really powerful thing. Not a lot of, I don't see a lot of people using it, or sometimes people get stuck on, well, how do I get a value right at the moment someone subscribes to this thing? Or what if I don't have the observable yet uh, and I need to subscribe to it? Observable defer is, is a really cool and powerful tool. Um, remember that you have it. 
Uh, the drag pattern, uh, again, this, is, this works with mouse movements or touch movements, but it's basically from the time you start, switch map into all of your movements, take those until your, your end fires. So your mouse up, mouse down, uh, mouse move, or, or in this case it was touch start, touch moves, uh, touch ends. So another thing that you may or may not have noticed is take, take until, take while, these, these operators that help you terminate an observable uh, in a controlled manner, they can be nested, it would, some at one in a switch map and one outside of the switch map, they can be composed one after the other, you can have multiple in a chain. Uh, for some reason, some people have this mental block like, oh, I have one take while in here, or I have one take until, like, I can't have more than one. You totally can have more than one. They're just different behaviors of composing on the same observable chain. Uh, take while repeat, we did this earlier. So take while is gonna kill an observable, but if you don't want the observable to die, you pluck a repeat or add a repeat on the end there, and everybody downstream from you never even knows that the observable died. Like it does, they have no idea that a complete ever fired anywhere past that, that repeat. So there might be a few of you that watch this whole talk and you're gonna be like, what, Ben, how could you test all that? That was a big mess of gobbledygook stuff. And you totally can test it and it's actually in the, the source code that I'll show you in GitHub. But that's another talk because I don't have time, sorry. So, yeah, yep. Yeah. Again, my name is Ben Leshy. I uh, run workshops in RxJS. You can find that at rxworkshop.com. <laughs>